We've, I've did some work on this recently with some physicians in um, the UK. And we, I mean, there is a bit too much use of opiates at the end of life. I think there's a growing consensus um, that this is a bit of a problem. Um, there's there's no, di no doubt that particularly with cancer and some types of organ failure, we need strong painkillers. It's not clear at all that we need to use uh, opiates at the level we currently do. We did find that um, the number of hallucinations rises with the use of opiates. And interestingly, deathbed visions, which have a prevalence in um, resource poor countries of around 30 to 40 percent, um, drop like a stone in hospices and palliative care that use heavy opiates. And that's interesting because deathbed visions are usually quite comforting and hallucinations are usually quite distressing. So, um, although other kinds of hallucinations are, are rather distressing. So I think we really do need to do some rethinking around uh, symptom management in the last, uh, particularly the last 48 hours of, of dying. That would be my, my observation. I mean, yes, it does. But I mean, bear in mind that um, it's often done as part of a symptom management regime. And um, our symptom management regimes are, historically speaking, still in their infancy. Um, quite a lot of people don't die under palliative care still. Mm -hmm. uh, only a very small uh, group of people who do. And uh, generally speaking, the people who are under palliative care, uh, most of them have cancer. And, um, and that can be very difficult uh, to manage in the, in the last stages. But what I think palliative care needs to do, hospice and palliative care need to do, is perhaps finesse the concerns with pain control with a drug that possibly has, um, um, possibly allows uh, dying people to have a, a little more alertness and control um, toward the end than they currently do. I, I think we we over-sedate dying patients at the moment. Lani or Jeff, do you want to add anything to this? Uh, the only thing I would add is um, that while morphine may alter some consciousness, uh, pain, it alters consciousness incredibly. So if you're wanting the end of life to um, be more unraveling, I guess, uh, I, I see pain as a huge unraveler, um, that people aren't able to focus, concentrate, be present, and all of that. So um, I, I, don't know what the, I don't know what the answer is, but I do know that pain gets in the way of that ending. So. Yeah, I, I think we just need to finesse the, uh -huh. the pharmacology there, that's mm -hmm. all. And we've mm -hmm. got alternatives to, mm -hmm. to morphine. So. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great question. I saw the morphine use on hospice that you know I saw it close. It's it's very it's key to the the very end in many ways. Um, but the other thought I had listening to you and thinking about the question is uh, one of my intellectual heroes is Aldous Huxley, and Huxley went out uh, intentionally on LSD that he had his wife uh, inject him with as he was actively dying, and so there that's a different kind of uh, answer. Um, so I think there are other options. I wouldn't su suggest that one as a legal option, but <laughs> but I mean, pe Why not? it's just to say people have thought about this, you know, and 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 it doesn't have to be more. I think it's a great question. Uh, I, I think you're probably right. You're probably going to not be there when you're dying if you use too much. It's it's worth mentioning too that there have been some clinical trials done with hallucinogens, especially yeah. psilocybin, for terminally ill patients. Yes. And apparently it has helped right. on that, in that kind of existential panic. Yeah. I think, um, I think I'll have to say that if you look at the international literature, terminal sedation is on the increase. There's no real understanding about why it's on the increase. There are pharmacological alternatives to, um, uh, to straight morphine, particularly at the end of life. And there's increasing dissatisfaction around the use of morphine in late stage dying. And some of that has been already shown to be the politics between doctors and nurses in particular. So, I mean, uh, there's clearly a problem there. There's clearly a problem. And the practices 
the um, terminal sedation practices vary very widely depending on what state in the USA you're in and what country we're talking about. Certainly in Britain it's on the rise and it's a worry and it's a public discussion at the moment.